Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the Cobra Grenade Thrower, the 1989 Frag Viper. Frag Vipers make their first comic book appearance in the old mobile comic run of G.I. Joe in issue number 92, and make their first cartoon appearance in the 1989 Deke animated five part miniseries Operation Dragonfire in part one. First, we'll take a look at the Frag Viper's accessories, starting off with his method of throwing the grenades. The Sesta, this curved-like device which he is holding in his hand here. I'll just detach it from this rather large hose and take a better look at it. Now the Sesta is actually based on a real world throwing device, a sort of a looped basket where you put a ball in here and when you throw it, it actually curves along here and actually gives it a fairly good arc. One very interesting thing about one detail on here, however, is the fact that on top here, it kind of looks like there's a separate machine gun with a magazine hooked onto the end here. So I'm not sure if that's part of the loading mechanism where you load all the extra grenades which funnel down this tube and into the Sesta, or whether that really was supposed to be a separate little machine gun there. Of course, we have this unique hose detaching this little hose on the top here and taking off the backpack, which is basically where he stores all of his uh, extra grenades, and they automatically shoot out the side here and through that hose. They're sculpted a little bit small, smaller than the actual grenades that he's been given. On top here, we have storage for the two extra grenades. It's rather unfortunate that the hand is the normal size G.I. Joe hand here. He can't really hold a ball-shaped object like his own grenades in his hand. The hole, which is used on the pegs for his backpack, unfortunately are just not in the right position for his thumb to hold on to there. Attached from the backpack, to his helmet, his rather unique helmet, I might add, is just a standard G.I. Joe wire. It's about two and a half inches long. It's quite frankly not as long as I would really like it to be. And last but not least, he comes with a defensive weapon, a rather large submachine gun. I'm not sure if this is based on a real world machine gun, however. Removing the Frag Viper's accessories and just taking a good look at the figure just by itself. I even, I have to admit that while I really do like this figure, he is a rather strange looking figure. But his outfit is overall um, like a brownish color. It's almost like an orangey brown, but it's still more on the brown side. He's no 1989 Heat Viper. And that's a good thing because at least that's the sort of military color which to be honest, a lot of Cobras actually don't have. They really, they really don't have a lot of good field colors in the overall Cobra Legions. But this guy, he's fine. Unfortunately, because of the oranginess of the brown, the light blue that they've used here really pops out more than I think it really normally would. You see a lot of Cobras, even Cobra Commander himself, wearing light blue, and it doesn't really seem like that's much of a big deal. But when you put it against an opposing color like this orangey brown, it really just sort of pops out a little bit too much for a lot of people's tastes. The blue is, of course, a whole bunch of what I would think are supposed to be sashes. Like, they're not really harnesses. They're not really, you know, they're your nylon looking um, harnesses. They're <laughs> really very fabric-y looking. 
And that's, of course, very strange because the overall brown, like if he took off the whole blue stuff, you'd be left with a very plain jumpsuit, which he's wearing. The jumpsuit has no pockets, no real detail. You're really just getting most of the detail from the blue. Sure, there's like little details, like these little silver bits to uh, simulate, I guess, like buttons or tie down straps or things like that. But it's rather, it's a rather strange thing that they've gone and done here, especially when it's asymmetrical in a way. I mean, yeah, he has like a gun there and some type of large pouch here. But then he has this thing on his arm here, which is attached to nothing. There's one on his wrist here, but not on the other side. And then there's there's no detail on his knife here, which actually does have a molded in strap, but they decided not to paint that. There's a lot of 1988 and 1989 figures, but seem to be missing paint tops, but specifically in the chest area, but like little things like here, especially when in the original artwork, that is colored in. One of the two things that everyone seems to remember about the Frag Viper, aside from the Sesta thing, is of course his helmet, which is really, really strange. I mean, the helmets on most of the 89 Cobra figures were a bit strange, some lovable, some not, but this one is just I, I guess you would either have to really love it or really hate it. It's a silver plastic, which unfortunately means that there are like the imperfections in it. But he has these big eyes. And overall, it just he looks like an alien, which um, I'll get to in just a moment. But one thing I found very interesting is that in American Hero, a book done by Dave Dorman, who did artwork for Hasbro back in the day. You notice that the prototype for this guy has a very small, it's a much smaller helmet he has here. You notice that he has just that one single visor-like thing, almost Boba Fett-like, but it's also something which is very common to Cobra figures, whereas this whole separate eye thing was actually not. As you can see, the Frag Viper is not the only one with a very strange looking metal helmet. The 1988 Charboil, the G.I. Joe Flamethrower, also had a very strange helmet design as well. Although I did speculate that he might have started off as a Cobra himself. And just to emphasize how strange the design of the Frag Viper's helmet is, in the Brazilian version of G.I. Joe, called Comandos Amasau, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. They didn't even bother to make the Frag Viper a human figure. He was an alien who came to Earth and was so enamored with the evil that Cobra was doing, he actually joined up with them. I mean, granted, there are quite a few departures from the stories of the uh, individual characters in the Brazilian line, but that one just takes the cake. His Cobra symbol is rather unfortunately placed on this sash because the sash is, well, wrinkled. So. The symbol is wrinkled as well. You would think that they would put it on his chest here because there's a lot of flat real estate there or on his bicep like a lot of other Cobra figures, but no, they decided to put it there. To be honest, that looks almost like um, something that they did at the last minute, but like he was supposed to be like an Iron Grenadier or something else, but no, he is actually designed to be this way, according to the um, prototype artworks. Now, a very interesting thing about the prototype artwork is his gun, this rather space age looking thing with a spiky shoulder stock. And even the corrected version, which still doesn't quite look like the gun that we eventually get with the figure. The Frag Viper didn't really take over for any Cobra figure. There was just no prominent Grenadier on the Cobra side before the Frag Viper appeared. However, on the Dreadnought side, we do have an individual here, 1986 Monkey Wrench, who, while he didn't come with any type of explosive accessory, he does come with a whole bunch of grenades all across his chest, and prominently in both the uh, comic book and cartoon, he is the explosive expert for the Dreadnoughts, and by extension, for Cobra, for hire. So just who is the Frag Viper's rival on the G.I. Joe side? Well, 
it could only be the G.I. Joe's most prominent and most recent Grenadier himself, the multi-shot Grenadier from 1988, Hardball. And while the Frag Viper uses traditional pineapple grenades, for this guy we have what looks like to be 40 millimeter grenades out of a traditional launcher. If you're looking for a Frag Viper on the aftermarket, he isn't really that hard to find, and his value hasn't really skyrocketed like a lot of uh, Vipers from this era. Mostly because, that while people who do tend to army build this guy really, uh, really love his accessories, they are really top-notch accessories, but even they have to complain that he really does look kind of strange. However, if you do want him, there are a few things to look out for. Uh, he does have a breakage problem. Unfortunately, he does have, uh, like, the, his crotch just does kind of break for this uh, figure. I don't know if it's just the design or whether the plastic is a little bit more brittle. I don't usually see broken thumbs, so I think it's really more the design of the figure that you do have to look out for. And as such, if you are buying him, to make sure that you are moving his legs very carefully because that seems to be the problem there. And as far as accessories go, obviously it's his grenades which will often go missing on this figure that you'll have to look out for. Because there's storage for them on the backpack, you'll always find almost two of them with the figure, but not the third. So you do have to look out for that. And yet, one strange thing is that I've often found that all of these figures seem to be missing the hose. A lot of people just put a traditional uh, G.I. Joe hose for that portion, which is incorrect. He should have a unique hose. Putting the Sesto back on this guy's hand is such a pain. I can never get it quite right because there's both pegs and tabs. The pegs go around the wrist and the tabs go into the hand. But uh, <laughs> this is just uh, this is just a pain. And sometimes I get it on like that just by accident and it just stays on there. It's very strange. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.